back. Thank you. Thank you. Great conversation. Whether or not the endorsements of former President Trump carry any weight or a lot of weight, the Republican Party is united around the idea of being anti-woke. Recent piece in the Wall Street Journal caught our attention titled The Revolt of the Unwoke. It focuses on an effort to recall three members of a school board in San Francisco. Quote, if the land of woke has a capital, it's San Francisco. The city by the bay has now become ground zero for a revolt by unwoke moms and dads. Reverend Jesse Lee Pedersen, radio and TV show host, also an expert in education, joins us now. We appreciate your time, Reverend. Thank you. What do you make of the fact that this revolt, if you want to call it that, is starting at the school board level? I think it's amazing. It's about time. It's about time that we, the American people, start to speak up against the enemies of America. What they're doing in San Francisco and around the country to families and children are absolutely wrong. And so they're not going to represent all of us. We need to vote them out and vote in people who represent the schools and represent all parents and not just some parents. Zoom out for us uh, in this. Does it, this go beyond the school boards? It does. They pretend that it's all about race and that black Americans have been discriminated against or due to racism and it's crit critical race theory and all that crap. That's not good. You don't create a problem. You don't solve a problem by creating another problem. We have to go back to the best qualified person or the best qualified kids, those who are earning the grades, those who are earning their way and not based on color. And I've said over and over and over again that black Americans are not suffering due to this phony idea of racism or police brutality or, or slavery or Jim Crow. It's about the family. When fathers and mothers get married, they teach their children how to be good at what they do, how to earn their way. And this is not happening in the black families right now, for the most part, and that black Americans are being used to destroy America and not build it up. Sir, and it's time to vote these people out. I think you'd probably agree that woke culture sort of celebrates victimhood and weakness over the best parts of America. And then we yeah. see that Simone Biles is celebrated for leaving the Olympics uh, because of the issues that, that she's having. Uh, is, is that why, is sort of this change in culture that you're describing, why we're seeing suddenly celebration of people who say, I don't want to compete? Everybody and their mama are victims now. And I noticed that these people who are crying victims are rewarded as though it's something good. That's not the right way to go. America is great because the people of America are great, those who earn their way. And when you give something to someone just because of their color or feeling this far sympathy for them, you're only weakening America. And there's no way we're gonna continue to be great as long as we award, reward the victims instead of the, folks, the children, adults and young, who are working hard to make America great by being their best. I, I'm, wonder, I'm wondering, from your perspective, as, as you talk about role models, and you've been at this for a long time, we've been following yes. your work for a very long time, you think about Kerry Strug in the 1996 Olympics, who won the gold essentially on a broken foot, and I don't think anyone uh, of my generation, at least, can forget watching that night in Barcelona, and you saw her face as she ran down and then landed the vault on essentially a broken foot. It entered her career. We now know that she'd been really pushed hard to do that because of her team. Uh, very different American hero to look at in the way Simone Biles is looked at, the way Carrie Strug is looked at. They're looked at the same way, but for different reasons. As you're trying to go into communities and tell people who their role models should be, which one do you pick? I would say the one that struggled the hardest, the one that worked the hardest, the one that won the race based on a broken feet. The one that earned the weight, not some woman that you just felt sorry for because she was unable, or any person, because they were unable to uh, do the job because they didn't put their best into it. This is the raw road that we're taking. We cannot continue down this road. America will only get worse. And, and, and this whole thing really is about controlling the people, the leaders of the so called leaders of the schools, of the government, of they are trying to take control of the people by rewarding the weak ones and, and putting down those who are earning their way. It's a raw road to take. When I was growing up, 
the best man won. It didn't matter about color. It didn't matter about male or female. Yeah. The person that worked the hardest. Well, cer certainly America has changed over the past 20 years, and the pendulum goes uh, far one direction and then comes back. We'll see if that's the move in San Francisco against the school boards is the beginning of that pendulum swinging back. Uh, Reverend, we appreciate all your time and also all the work uh, that you've done in the communities around America. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Congratulations on your show. Thank you. The more things change, the more they stay the same, right? In Washington, it is the status quo once again. Senators agreed to spending more of our money. Just moments ago, the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill cleared a major procedural vote in the Senate, but there's still a lot of infighting to be done, not just between the parties, but among Republicans and Democrats themselves. News Nation correspondent Kelly Meyer spent the day at the Capitol, and as I understand it, Kelly,